Everybody knows that all the coolest kids are using two-way pick slanting to achieve maximum alternate picking speeds, but if you want to get good at this technique, you gotta have some sick licks to practice it with. Try this one out. Hello there campers and welcome to a brand new installment of Weekend Wang Shop. Here with your best buddy, Uncle Ben. For a couple of years now over on his YouTube channel, Troy Grady and the Cracky the Code team have been unraveling the secrets of the star's alternate picking prowess, namely by breaking down the systematic approach of pick slanting. For a complete breakdown on everything you need to know about pick slanting and how it can affect your playing, be sure to go watch everything Troy and his crew have over on his channel. It's really amazing stuff. But essentially what all this pick slanting business is, is, is the explanation that like the really high speed alternate picking players like Al Di Miola or Andy Wood, any of those guys that can just alternate pick through anything, their picking is not like this. It's not just straight down and up. It has a slant to it. It has an angle to it to get you in and out of the strings at really high speeds. Whenever you have the pick tilted like this, it's what we call downward pick slanting. And whenever the picking angle is going like this, it's what we call upwards pick slanting. I'm gonna teach you guys uh, the licks that I made up to practice both of these positions. And then after that, we're gonna talk a little bit about these two different pick slants and why you would use one instead of the other and how to know when to use up slant, when to use down slant. But before we start breaking all this stuff down, let's hear this lick again at stepdad speed. And as always, you guys can find a full tab for this week's lesson over on my Instagram page, at Ben Eller Guitars. Give me a follow, find the tab for this week's lesson, learn how to play it, then upload a video of yourself shredding through it, along with the hashtag Weekend Wank Shop. So first things first, let's talk about the lick itself and then get into the details about the picking after that. Now the cool thing about this is, is you could apply this idea and this phrasing concept to any other three note per string scale that you know. This one happens to be in the key of D minor. Now first let me show you the scale pattern I'm using here so you have an idea of the path we're going through the strings. On the A string play 8, 10, 12. Same thing on the D. On the G we're going to play 9, 10, 12. On the B, it's going to be 10, 11, 13. And then on the high E, it's 10, 12, 13. So maybe practice that pattern. And get a feel for that before you move on. Now, I know a lot of you guys, you know, you'll hear that out of context and think, oh, it sounds like, like an F major scale. But over D minor, it sounds out as a D minor scale. So keep that in mind. Now, this lick is all alternate picked, okay, starting with the downstroke. And what we're gonna do to play this is start off by playing 8, 10, 12 on the A string. Then do the same thing on the D. So that's down, up, down, up, down, up. That makes your first group of six notes. This lick is phrased as sextuplets, which means it's six notes over every beat. So after you play, what you're gonna do is to reiterate those same three notes on the D string again. So you're gonna play 8, 10, 12 again, and then move up to 9, 10, 12 on the G. So you have, Now you could just continue doing this on through the scale. And you have a really effective pattern that I call split sixes. I call it that because you're splitting the six notes between two strings. And that's a really good pattern to learn, but I change this up a little bit to work in the two-way pick slanting stuff. So after you play those first two phrases, what we're gonna do is backtrack to that D string again. So play eight, 10, 12, then go to the G, nine, 10, 12. Play those same three notes on the G again, 9, 10, 12. And then go to the B and play its three notes, 10, 11, 13. Next what you're gonna do is to go back to the G string and play 9, 10, 12. B string, 10, 11, 13. Reiterate those notes again, 10, 11, 13. And then go to the high E string here and play 10, 12, 13. Okay, so now you have this. And then lastly, I ended on the 10th fret high E string, which is then a D to resolve against the root of a D minor chord. And then I just gave one of those big old Hendrixy unison bends here for extra emphasis 
by playing the uh, 10 on the high E, 13 on the B, bending the 13 up a whole step and giving it some juicy vibrats. So now that you've learned the lick, let's spend a second here and talk about this pick slanting business because there seems to be a lot of people who get confused about when you should be doing downwards pick slanting versus upwards pick slanting. Uh, somehow a lot of people get in their heads that one is for ascending and the other is for descending and that couldn't be farther from the truth. In order to really understand when you should be in downward pick slanting, again where the upstroke is free, or upwards pick slanting where the downstroke is free and away from the strings, uh, in order to understand when you should be doing which one, all that you've got to look at is what is the last note on the string. That is all that matters. It doesn't matter if you're ascending or descending or going from a high string to a low string or whatever. It all revolves around was the last note on the string a downstroke or was it an upstroke. So look at it this way. Whenever you're playing alternate picking at really high speeds, you're trying to move from string to string. What it means is that the last note on the string needs to be free in a way. You know, the pick needs to be away from the strings to get to the next string in either direction. So if the last note on the string is a downstroke, then you need to be doing a downstroke that is free and away from the strings. So in other words, if the last note on the string is a downstroke, you need to be doing upwards pick slanting. Because upwards pick slanting is the one that has the superpower of changing strings after downstrokes. Meanwhile, if the last note on the string is an upstroke, that means you need to be in downwards pick slanting mode. That way your upstroke is going out and away from the strings and is ready to move on to the next string. So whenever you take a look at any lick, just ask yourself, what's the last note on the string? It doesn't matter what the first one is, what the middle note is, it doesn't matter. What's the last note? That's what you need to be concerned about. So in other words, whenever you take a look at this pattern, if we're starting off with down, up, down, then it's time to move on to the next string, right? So the last note on the A string right there was a downstroke. So that means that we should be starting this lick off in upwards pick slanting to make sure we go down, up, down, and then I can get to that D string really easily. Again, if my pick was flat and I went down, up, down, I'd have to do this to get to an upstroke. If I was in downward pick slanting position and I went down, up, down, same deal. I'm in between the strings, got to come up and over to do that upstroke. But if you're in upwards pick slant, you're out of the strings, you just bash back into that D like that. So whenever you play that start off an upward pick slanting, down, up, down. Then when you go to the D string here, we're going to be playing up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, so again, the last note on that string was also a downstroke, so that just means more upwards pick slanting. So, so far, and I'm really trying to exaggerate these positions so you can see them really easily on camera. Once they get up to speed and you master them, they get way more subtle and way more flat. I'm going to try to make them really obvious so you guys can see it on camera really well. So, I've got upwards pick slanting through this section. And then when I get to the G, I go up, down, up. That's the last note on that string is an upstroke, right? So again, if the string ends on an upstroke, downwards pick slanting. You can kind of reverse it in your head if you want to. If it ends on an up, downward pick slant. If it ends on a down, upwards pick slant. The terminology can get a little confusing sometimes, but you'll get the hang of it. Okay, so the pattern so far has been up slant, down slant. Now, whenever we go back to the D string here and the pattern restarts, it's just reiterating the same thing. Down, up, down, so that means upward pick slanting. Up, down, up, oop, there's a wrong note right there. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Again, the last note was a downstroke. So, each one of these segments of this pattern that we're playing is gonna go up slant, down slant, up slant, down slant, up slant, and that last one, it doesn't really matter because you're not changing strings after it. So for that last segment right there where you do, you can just stay in upwards pick slant. Because again, it doesn't matter since we're not changing strings. So up, down, up, down, up, down. Here's a little bit more homework for you too, for you guys to work on because somebody inevitably will ask about three note per string scales with two way pick slanting. Somebody always does in the comments. Again, think about what is the last note on the string and that'll tell you what pick slant to use. So in other words, if I was playing through that scale pattern right there, uh, just straight through, you know? Then I'll need to be thinking about, okay, the first string ends on a downstroke, so that means up slant. The next string, up, down, up, ends on an upstroke, so that means down slant. So up slant, down slant. 
Next string, down, up, down, is ending on a down stroke, so that's an up slant string as well. Up slant, down slant, up slant. Next string is up, down, up, which means down slanting. And then the last string, again, it doesn't really matter since you're not changing strings after that. So if you're playing through a three note per string scale, it's always gonna have to be that way at really high speeds. Up slant, down slant, up slant, down slant, up slant. And that goes for either direction. Thank you guys as always for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and mash that little bell button down there for brand new lessons every single doggone week. Be sure to check out Troy Grady and his amazing Cracking the Code stuff over on his channel. He's really changing the face of high performance guitar playing. I owe that guy a lot. You guys can follow me over on Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars or over on my Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash Uncle Ben Eller. If you guys would like some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons with me, be sure to drop me an email, benellerguitars at gmail.com. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching. Now get away from this computer and go practice. Less clicking, more picking.